my name is David Steensma. I'm a senior physician at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston and an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. My area of research is the myelodysplastic syndromes, a quite difficult area of bone marrow failure syndromes uh, that can uh, over time evolve into acute leukemia. And on the clinical trial side, uh, I'm leading a study, a multicenter study, in which we're using the first targeted splicing inhibitor in uh, myeloid malignancies, um, because that's the most common class of mutation associated with MDS. And so we're quite excited about the potential for this avenue of therapy to improve outcomes for patients. One of the most difficult situations that we encounter is when a patient who may be older than age 70 um, has a low blood count and uh, the diagnostic evaluation, including bone marrow biopsy, does not show a clear diagnosis. We've really begun in the last two to three years to incorporate molecular genetic testing routinely in the evaluation of these patients. But we've learned that by age 70, 10% of patients who are healthy and have normal blood counts have an MDS-associated mutation detectable in their blood. They do have a risk of going on to MDS. They do have a risk of going on to develop cardiovascular disease, but most people are never going to have any problem related to this. We've called this state clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, or CHIP. And distinguishing CHIP from low-risk MDS is a major research priority at the moment. What we really need are good natural history studies to look at which mutations at which variant allele frequencies over time lead to MDS and which uh, are just stable for many years uh, such that we can counsel patients effectively. It would also be fantastic to have a treatment to eliminate these clones and potentially decrease the patient's risk not only of developing a hematologic malignancy but also of developing a cardiovascular event. In the short term, I think um, being aware of the clonal mutation patterns in MDS uh, influences the prognostication because we know that certain mutations when present elevate the risk status of the patient and those patients should perhaps be watched more carefully or treated earlier than, than other patients with, with certain approaches. From a, the standpoint of therapy, certain mutations are targetable, such as with the splicing inhibitor that I talked about earlier, such as with uh, inhibitors of isocitrate dehydrogenase uh, or other very targetable uh, mutations. The real area where uh, molecular genetic profiling is influencing practice is in diagnosis. And if we get a well-constructed molecular genetic panel test back on a patient who has a mild cytopenia and it's normal, it's negative, no mutations detected, that's actually quite reassuring because the negative predictive value of a normal test is high. That really strongly suggests the patient doesn't have MDS evolving, they don't have another hematologic malignancy uh, evolving, they may have an immune-mediated uh, cytopenia. Uh, whereas if the test is positive, then we face this conundrum, is it CHIP, is it early MDS, and, and that's still an area that's really being sorted out. I think we're in a, a really exciting era with respect to a whole new uh, subset of, of testing, uh, and it certainly has changed the tenor of discussions with our colleagues about cases, about patients, um, and also the conferences that we have, which used to be focused on pathology patterns and morphology, now are dominated by discussions of how do we interpret these molecular genetic results because it's, it's not always straightforward.